Today, I feel like talking about these Fostex T50RP headphones. I've been considering getting a pair of these for ages, specifically because I need to know what's inside this weird square bit, but the price is a little bit meh to me. I mean, they're, they're not super expensive, but at this price point, there's a lot of exceptionally notable competition. Uh, the Bayer Dynamic DT770 and the Audio-Technica ATH-M50X come to mind there. But then I realized these things use planar magnetic drivers, and suddenly I absolutely had to have them at that price. I don't know how it took me so long to find that out. But anyway, they're here now, and I'm excited to give my observations. This design... I, I just... I absolutely love this design. It's so devastatingly function over form like a pelican or a helicopter. But these sick orange accents thrown in, I just love the little unnecessary aesthetic details like that. I'd like to note that the other plastic models in the range, the T20RP and the T40RP, use the same color of accents, which is a choice I don't agree with. I feel like they should be a little more physically distinguished. Oh, and there's a woodback version called the T60RP that still somehow has this weird square bit, even though it's hewn out of a piece of wood. Uh, the other plastic models, though, they're intriguing to me. The lower ones aren't actually cost-cut versions of this, as far as I can tell. The T20RP is open back, the T40RP is closed back, and this T50RP is semi-open back. Uh, Fostex claims they're all tuned differently because of this distinction, but terms like deep bass and focused bass don't seem incredibly helpful to me. Uh, they do claim this one is flat and clear, though, and I pretty much agree. Before we go into the tuning, though, I want to mention the elephant in the room. RP, what does that stand for? Regular phase. What does that mean? Unclear as far as I can tell. Uh, there was a forum post I can't find anymore where somebody was suggesting that it's got to do with how they handle flexing of the driver. That sometimes traditional, like, loudspeaker accordion joints can sort of get out of phase with the intended movement of the diaphragm at just certain frequencies and stuff like that. Um... However, as light as the diaphragms and headphones are, I would be surprised if this was realistically an issue coming up in this market, and I'd be slightly more surprised to find out that it could even be a noticeable problem with the volumes we're talking about. I don't like when companies come up with a fancy buzzword name for technology they employ and don't explain what it is, but I do like the orange bits, so I'll give them a pass on this. Uh, the tuning. It's rapidly becoming a favorite of mine. The bass is powerful and precise without being overwhelming, with decent expression of sub-bass below. The mid-range seems, well, flat enough, and it's very present and precise. That's important to me personally. You lose so much with a V-shape. The treble is precise and clear, but it's a little on the quiet side. They didn't overdo that tuning choice. These headphones don't stray into bassy territory, in my opinion, but there was definitely an attempt to keep these from becoming too harsh. Personally, I think some extra treble would help it, but that's just me. What do you notice? In all ranges, the term precise comes to mind. Planner magnetic drivers. I'm not going to sit here and say these are perfectly tuned or anything, though I do like the tuning, but they enunciate pretty freaking clearly through the whole range. They do a decent job of enunciating waveforms clearly enough to put an illusion of space into the music, as a reminder that the instruments were separated at some point. The soundstage is also very good. Any recording where they let the room breathe when they were doing the recording, or where the mix is minimalist and simple, these really shine. All the subtle echoes of the room really stand out. I'm kind of surprised I haven't seen these mentioned more than I have, to be honest. I hope the manufacturers aren't like serial killers or something. Uh, that being said, there are some issues that should probably be mentioned. The foremost is the output level. These things are 50 ohms. A, l a little bit beefy for like modern stuff, but they need a similar amount of power to my 250 ohm Bayer Dynamics. This is because planar magnetic drivers are a double-edged sword. 
Would you like a lecture? I kind of want to do a lecture. Feel free to skip around. Some of this is just going to be guesswork. They're built around the same basic operating principles, planar magnetic drivers and dynamic drivers, but there are some design differences. Ooh, that was the most interesting part of the video. So, dynamic drivers have a centralized voice coil repelling from and attracting toward a single magnet moving a diaphragm forwards and backwards with a changing current fed through said voice coil because of magnetism. Planar magnetic drivers have a more decentralized voice coil spread basically over the whole face of the diaphragm, repelling from and attracting toward at least one grill of magnets designed to provide a consistent magnetic field on a plane, hence planar magnetic. Spreading the coils out spreads out the force from the magnetic coil which I believe reduces stress on the diaphragm and allows the diaphragm to be a little bit thinner and lighter, as well as providing for exceptional control over the entire face of the diaphragm. There's a strong reduction in wobble and improvement in control at both very high and very low frequencies. But it also seems to reduce the field strength that can be generated by the voice coil at a particular voltage. The stacked coils on the dynamic driver sort of reinforce each other. You don't get that here, of course. Uh, the magnets also have to be placed far enough away from the diaphragm that they won't collide with it, limiting both the effective strength of the magnetic field at the diaphragm's position and the driver's maximum power handling capability. Dynamic drivers have the same difficulty with leaving room for movement, but the coil can go like around or inside the magnet. Not so here. You don't want strong enough magnets to like erase a hard drive or anything or stick to cheap earrings, that would be fun. So yeah, that's a huge chunk of the character of these things, just precise drivers that really aren't energy efficient. They work fine with everything I've tested them on, but yeah, they need pretty high output to work at reasonable volumes. On to more basic things that matter more. They're not really comfortable. Look, look how thin these cushions are. Like, th these have not collapsed or anything. That's just how they are. Um, there are aftermarket ones you can get, but, I mean, that might change the sound. Uh, also, this bright orange cable that I like with, with the little locking end bits, these are apparently pretty delicate. Uh, tons of people make custom aftermarket cables for these, but also the actual terminal in there is just a regular 3.5mm stereo connector, so... If you find a generic cable that doesn't interfere with the locking element, it'll work fine. Unsurprisingly, semi-open is open enough that these don't block much of any sound. I guess they're just like slightly more closed off than the ones that are labeled open, while still being classically open, but yeah, these do not isolate. All this being said, I really like these things. They're rapidly becoming a favorite of mine. I'm very, very excited to open these up next time. Make sure you stay tuned. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a good evening. Like and subscribe if you want, or don't, I'm not your dad.